In this video Excel tutorial, we're going to do a number of things. We're going to take a feedlot spreadsheet decision making tool and use that to teach a number of things in Excel. And what we're really thinking about is making user friendly spreadsheets. In this video, we're going to talk the use of data validation where we help the user put in the right numbers. The use of cell protection to make sure the person using your spreadsheet doesn't delete an important formula. The use of the solver function which can help us maximize profits. The use of macros to call a solver a function if you want someone using the solver but they don't know how to use the solver. And macros involve a often a lot of problems along the way and so I'm going to show you how we fix some of those. It's important to note that I'm using what I believe to be the 2007 version of Excel. Now let me briefly describe what this spreadsheet is. This is a decision management tool for feedlots. These, the spreadsheet uses real numbers so it really could be used in a feedlot to make decisions and in a feedlot what we do is we put animals on feed and a cow will come in on their first after being one day in the feedlot they will have been fed one day after 50 days they will have been 50 days on feed now based off of a quadratic regression equation we know that if the cow has 50 been on feed 50 days it will weigh about 964 pounds and you'll notice that whenever you click on one of these things, a comment, a comment box pops up like we see here. This is what the feedlot manager chooses. They say, I'm going to feed cows 100 days, 150 days. Then, how long they should feed cows depends on a number of things. First, how much does it cost to feed the cow? Here, let's say it costs, it costs about $1 per day to feed a cow in a feedlot, which, which I think is a pretty realistic number and here's the output price this is when you go to sell the cow you get your revenues based on how much you can sell it for and the output price and the input price those are determined by market prices they're not the, they're not chosen by the manager so the manager has to just look at the world look at markets see what prices are and enter them here now based off input days on feed we know how big the cow will be and then we take into account the input price and the output price. We can calculate the revenues. If you sell a cow after being on feed, say, 50 days, the cost of feeding a cow 50 days, and overall the profits, the revenues minus cost to the feedlot manager. Now, just in case you're wondering, this is just the budget. It, it assumes the cow has already been bought, and so that's money you've already paid for. And so... The cost of buying the cow to put in the feedlot doesn't depend on how many days they're in the feedlot. This is a partial budget that looks at the revenues and the cost of feeding cattle, say, one more day in the feedlot. So the first thing we want to use is the data validation. That's what we're going to do down here. We want the person to put in the number of days on feed. Well, they can't put a days on feed of D that doesn't make any sense. That's not a number of days. 50 days of feed is okay. Minus 20 days on feed is not okay. That doesn't make sense. And a cow will also never be on feed 20,000 days on feed. So what we want to do here is use data validation to help the user make sure they put in the right numbers. Let's go up here to help the manager figure out a good number to put in for days on feed or what's a valid number to make sure they don't put in a nonsensical number. First I've selected this cell, then I'm going to go to data and then I'm going to look for data validation right here. I'm going to click it, data validation, criteria. Do we allow any value or must it be whole numbers, decimals? A feedlot manager is going to care, not going to care about keeping cows fraction of a day in feed. It's just not that significant. So we're going to require it to be a whole number. We want it to be between zero days on feed, and they would never be on feed 500 days, but let's just make sure we get a maximum number that we don't have to worry about being violated. When we do that, then um, let's see. 
Okay, see what happened? You can keep cows 100 days on feed. What if they tried accidentally put in a letter? Well, it says the value entered is not valid. User have restricted values that can enter into the sale. So what about 50 days on feed? Yes, that works. 20,000? No, that's a, that's a error also. Now, also what we want to do is we want to, we don't want to just tell them when they made errors. We want to help them to keep from making errors. So we're going to go data validation. Again, I've selected the sale days on feed. Data validation. Whole number between five. I'm going to go to input message. And what we're going to do, I'm going to give it a title, days on feed. And we're going to tell the feedlot manager that days on feed should be a whole number between 0 and 500. Then we want to do an error alert. And if they make an error, then this is what they'll see. The error message will say, days on feed must be a whole number between 0 and 500. We click OK, and now here's what we have. When someone comes over and selects the sale, look at what pops up. A little helpful box that says days on feed should be a whole number between 0 and 500. And what if they put 1,000? Well, the error. The error message said days on feed must be a whole number between 0 and 500. So what we've done is given the user a lot of good input on what that value should be. And for input price, we're going to do something similar. Input price, I'm going to select input price. I'm going to go to data validation. I'm going to do these a little quicker. And we're going to say here, and you can see this one was already done for you. It says input price should be a, it can be a decimal, doesn't have to be a whole number, should be a decimal here, between zero and four dollars per day. Input message, Input, enter a daily price of feed and live cattle in dollars per day. Air alert, the daily feed cost must be a number greater than zero and less than four dollars. And you notice when it's select that this helpful box pops up too. Output price, we haven't done, that data validation has not been done. So I'm going to go up here, data validation, data validation. Settings, we want output price to be a decimal between 0 and let's put 4. Live cattle, I assure you, will never sell for more than $4 per pound. Input message, output price, the output price is the, well, let's just say enter the output price in dollars per pound of live cattle. Say error alert. If they enter something wrong, the output price must be a number between 0 and 4. Decimals places allowed. Okay, so what if we come over here and hit the letter D? Oh, wrong. Output price must be a number between zero and four decimal places allowed. Cancel. Notice once we select this, we get the helpful output price. What to enter? If we enter not negative five, error. If we enter five, error. If we enter 0.788, that is O. Oh, and that is how you use data validation. I found it to be a very useful function.